Hey, physics babies, welcome to Pandemic Education. This is episode seven. Um, today we are doing some new content, very exciting. We are going to be talking about simple circuits. Let's get into it. All right, so still in unit five, electricity and magnetism. And like I said, today is simple circuits. Um, our objective, by the end of the day today, you will be able to draw simple circuit diagrams and indicate the direction of conventional current flow. So there's a few things you might have some questions about as we progress through this unit. I prom I'm sorry, this lesson, I promise I will clear up um, any questions or concerns that you have, but for today, we're just kind of doing the basics of drawing these circuits and we're not really gonna be talking about um, how will these pieces work together. We will, don't worry. I would not deprive you of that learning. <laughs> All right, um, so last class we talked about electric potential difference. And remember that's the, um, we measure it in volts um, and it kind of has to deal with um, that electric field that we have from our positive to our negative. Um, our uh, electric potential difference, it's that pressure that causes particles to move in the direction that those field lines are pointing. So um, that's gonna be really important today as we begin drawing circuits. So there are two kinds of circuits that we will be discussing. The first type is a closed circuit and a closed circuit is closed. It's a complete and unbroken conducting path that occurs between the source of the current and the return of the current. So the key with a closed circuit is that the current leaves the source that creates it and is able to actually return to it. It makes like a full loop. So if we look at this picture right here, I've got our battery, this is our source of the current, and our current leaves the battery and is able to move through. This is called a switch. Right now it's closed because the current is actually able to go through here. Leave the switch, go through the light bulb, empower it to then return. Um, some keys to look for, like if you have a, a source of light, is the light on? If the light is on, then you know that your circuit is closed. Um, also, again, things like a switch, make sure that they're down and complete that loop. So an open circuit is when the switch is turned to the off position. There's a break somewhere in that circuit and our electricity isn't able to travel from start, make its way all the way through it and return. So if we look here, the switch is now open, right? So current leaves the battery, gets here, and it travels up this little metal path, but then because it's not touching us, it can't keep going. And we can see that our, our um, light bulb is off. So this happens all the time in your home, right? When you flip a switch and turn a light on, you are closing the circuit and electricity is able to flow and power the light bulbs. When you flip the switch again, you are opening that circuit and the light bulb turns off because the electricity isn't able to flow and make a complete closed path. So definitely take a second and write down all of these things. Um, pause the video, I promise I'll be here when you return. <laughs> um, these are our circuit schematic symbols. So we have different symbols to represent current, resistance, and voltage. So current, we've got a straight line for a wire. We've got, uh, this is for a switch being open and this is for the switch being closed. As you can see, just kind of like two little dots and then the line either open, not touching it or touching it to say that it's closed. And a circle with a capital A for an ammeter. Ammeter measures current, we use amps as the unit. Um, talking about resistance, uh, this is our symbol for a lamp. We just give it a little X. And then this is the symbol for a regular plain old resistor. Um, we're not gonna talk about what resistors do today, but I want you to be able to draw them. Um, now voltage, so this is how we kind of uh, indicate where our power is coming from. That's where our um, current's going to start and end. So we've got a positive, um, it's a long kind of skinny line and then a short stubby little one for the negative end. This is just a single cell. Um, if you have a battery of two or more cells, you just kind of like add the little cells together. Um, batteries are, can be many cells. Um, I believe your car battery is a six cell battery. 
um, in case you were curious. Um, but if I don't specify how many cells it is, you can just draw one. And then this uh, circle with a capital V for a voltmeter that measure, measures our electroprovincial difference, our voltage. Okay, make sure you've got all of these written down because you will need them. All right, so current flow. There are two different flows that we need to talk about. The first one is the conventional current flow. And uh, this is what your boy, Ben Franklin, with his key and his kite, decided way back when, when he was making all of his discoveries regarding electricity. He decided in drawing these schematics that the conventional current flow is the direction that a positive charge would move. So a positive charge would leave the positive side of our battery or our cell, go out and go towards the negative. Remember our opposites attract theory, right? It's going to leave the positive end to return to the negative end. Um, some people in the, you know, uh, electrical and physics community like to talk about the electron flow and that is the direction that an electron would flow through a circuit so it leaves the negative end and flows towards the positive end um, you'll pretty often be asked for conventional current flow but make sure that you know the difference between the conventional current flow and the electron flow and you are ready in case i ask you for the other one so you can you know get these problems correctly um, please take a second, make sure you draw this uh, schematic and talk about the um, conventional current flow and the electro, uh, electron flow. Um, if you can remember one, you should be able to remember the other, right? All right. So we are going to do two examples together. And we are going to draw the schematic diagram for the following circuit, and we are going to be sure to indicate the direction of current flow. All right, let's get into it. Going to use my document camera here. Try to use my document camera here at least. Jesus. There we go. Okay. Sorry. There we go. There we go, that's better. Okay. Oh, Jesus. The lag on this is something else. Okay, Struggle Fest 2020, let me tell you. All right, so with, uh, with our schematic, I always like to start with the battery. It's the easiest place. So I'm gonna find my battery, I'm gonna find the positive end, as I know it's hard to see, but there's a little plus right here. So I'm gonna start with that, and I'm gonna start with that in my schematic. So just draw the battery. Now, from your battery, trace the wire to trace the direction, to trace our current, right? And to find kind of what comes next. While this is like a weird looking loop, we traditionally draw our schematics of these things as being very boxy and square. So I'm gonna make my little box following my wire. The first thing that we're coming to is what's called, if you look at it, <laughs> it's called a multimeter. And it's a multimeter because we look and we see A's for amps, we see V for volts, and we see this weird looking little upside down horseshoe, which is ohms and that's the unit that we uh, measure resistance in. So this multimeter measures resistance, measures volts, and measures amps. It measures multiple things, hence why it's called a multimeter, just in case you were wondering. Um, so looking at it, we need to decide, was it acting as right now? Because that's gonna determine what I put in my schematic. I see the little switch is pointing at A, A, for amps, so it's an ammeter right now. Easy peasy. Okay, so current enters it, current comes out of it, and it comes to a light bulb. Okay, so I have to draw a little lamp here. Like I said, this is like a weird, like zigzaggy. We draw them very square to make them look 
simple. These are supposed to be simple diagrams to just talk about what's in our circuit and the direction that our current is flowing. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, then it goes into the light bulb and back to the other end of my battery. Cool. So take a second and think, did I just draw an open circuit or a closed circuit? And how do you know? Okay, pause me if you're not ready for the answer. Um, this is a closed circuit. If we look, I can take my pencil and without picking it up, go through the entire thing, right? That means the current can go through the entire thing. Was that correct though? Well, if we look, our light bulb is on. I know it's hard to see our little yellow lines there, but that light bulb being on means that our circuit has to be closed. If it's not closed, there's no way for this light bulb to be powered, right? The electricity can only flow if it's a closed circuit. All right, last step is to indicate the direction of current flow. So current flow, we think about the direction a positive charge would move. It would move from the positive to the negative. So I'm just gonna add a little arrow and write current flow. And that's it. Our first schematic done. You'll notice as we draw our batteries that there is this little like space here. That's not a switch to be clear. I will show you how I draw switches in just a second. Um, if you are, make sure you've got this example written down and if you are ready, we can move on together. If not, take a second, pause me, and then when you're ready, we'll move on. All right. So. All right. We have a new diagram that we need to draw a schematic for. So once again, First thing I always start with is our cell or our battery. And I see it right here and here's the positive end. So, shoot the doop, positive. Now, where you put your battery doesn't matter. What matter, I'm like where you put your battery on your paper doesn't matter. What matters is that you follow the correct order for your circuit, okay? As long as this circuit goes batter, uh, cell, voltmeter, light bulb switch, back to battery, you're fine. It doesn't matter where you draw it. I just tend to put my battery in the exact same place every time because then like I know top left is where my battery is gonna be and that's kind of where the start is. Feel free to do it however you want. Um, just make sure that your order is correct. So we're gonna trace our wires from the positive end of our battery, we go to a voltmeter and it literally says voltmeter. Cool. So circle with a capital V for my voltmeter. Okay. Goes in, comes out, it goes to a light bulb. Okay. A light bulb gets that little X as a lamp from the light bulb. We're coming to a switch if you're unsure about whether the switch is open or closed, look back at your light bulb. This light bulb is out, it's dark. If it's dark, that means my switch has to be open because if it's an open switch, electricity is not able to flow through it. So here we go. And that's how I draw switches. Um, you can use the little open circle I personally fill them in. Um, I just, I don't know, I think that's easier and it doesn't look like a mistake. <laughs> um, so I make a nice dot. My line is not going to touch. I'm gonna to leave this gap here because the switch is an open switch right now. Another dot for where this piece would kind of come down and close it. And then from the switch, we go into the negative end of our battery. Cool, just like that. Again, this is a very round um, diagram. We draw our schematics to be very square and we space out our pieces. It's just kind of conventional. Um, I mean, it, at the end of the day, does it really matter? No, 
but if you're not making them square, people might get mad if you're trying to, you know, show schematics for electricity on like a house or something. <laughs> um, anyways, the last thing we need to do is indicate the direction of current flow. So my current flows in the direction that a positive charge would move. So it starts at the positive and moves towards the negative. So in my picture, that is once again, counterclockwise. Cool. And part of why I drew this counterclockwise, if you look at our picture, current would flow in this direction, which again is also counterclockwise. Um, there are a lot of little choices that you kind of need to make to make sure that your picture makes sense. Um, like I said, like you do have choices. I could have taken this whole image here and flipped it as long as I want battery, voltmeter, lamp, open switch. It's technically correct, but I like to try and be kind of as accurate as what I see in my diagram. Because if I were to ask you then to build um, a circuit based on a diagram, you want it to look as close to whatever the original idea is as possible, right? So that is uh, it for us. Um, stop sharing. So that's it. Um, that's how you draw circuits. For your uh, practice on this, I've got, I had stations that we were gonna do. Unfortunately, we're still not together and I really, really miss you guys, but um, I'm going to save the stations in case any of you want extra practice on this. But um, so that means that your assignment, there are some independent practice problems that are going to be posted on Google Classroom. Draw the schematics for the circuits that are listed, take a picture of them and post it on Google Classroom. That'd be the easiest way. If you're having a hard time getting the picture to upload in Google Classroom, email it to me. Um, that's it though. I hope you guys are all doing well and I miss you all tons and I love you lots. Talk to you soon. Bye.